So what I want to talk to you guys about and show you real quick in this video is the fun way to diagnose things and how inexpensive it is with just a pen UV light and some yellow glasses. You can get them online for under $20. And if you own these, you can solve your family, your own and friends AC issues and then tell them like you own it. Show them how to fix it, what needs to get done. And don't forget to check out 1A Auto for the parts. We even sell the kits for the AC compressor. But I want to show you how to check it out, solve the mystery. It's kind of fun. So we're going to go from the beginning to the end and discover what leaks this car has. So one of the things I want to talk about is AC and why is it misdiagnosed or conf so confusing to some people. And some people actually say, oh, my air is not blowing cold anymore. And they might get someone that says, ah, oh, well, the car is old. It just needs a new charge. It's got the old Freon in it. Well, I'm here to tell you that's 100% wrong. It's a sealed system. Think of it as your refrigerator. Every three years or four years, do you put Freon in your refrigerator? I don't think so, and I'm sure you don't. And guess what? Those refrigerators sometimes last 10, 15, 20 years. That Freon does not get old. It doesn't wear its coldness down. If your system is blowing warm, then you have a leak, period. Or you have a system that's not working, so the Freon's not passing through. But mostly, 90% of the time, it's as simple as a leak. You can solve the problem by yourself, find out what parts you need, check us out at 1AAuto.com, get it recovered from a professional that has the machine, bring it back to your own repairs, and then back to that shop, let them charge it up for you, vacuum it and charge it, and you'll be good to go. And you can save thousands that way. Very simple, let's start from the beginning. What I'm gonna do is walk you from the firewall, because I like to start at one point, therefore I will work my way around. So I'm gonna do it in the light, and then we're gonna show you with the lights out. So here you have the AC lines, they go right into that firewall right there. That's the compartment where you guys are sitting inside, and you got a high and a low side, that goes into what they call the evaporator, which looks like a heater core. It's a little, little mini heater core in there, but it's for the Freon, so it's called an evaporator. On the other side of that, some cars have orifice tubes. This particular car has what they call an expansion valve. So that little block you see, that little gold circle on top, looks like a coin. That's the expansion valve. That's a piece in between the evaporator and these lines. Then you follow the lines up, and there's always going to be connectors. And inside these connectors are O-rings down here. These are where they put the Freon in, and that's the Schrader valve, so that's what they call those. Now, the thinner line is the high side, and the bigger line is the low side. And you can actually feel in this car, this line's cold, and the car's not even running. Liquid vapor. Goes down, it goes to that compressor, the compressor's a pump, pumps that Freon around, and then it goes right out to the condenser, flows through like a radiator, that kind of cools it down, that's why it's in the front. The air cools it down, keeps it at even temperature, and just recycles itself, keep going back and forth. It's a sealed unit, just like your coolant is a sealed unit. Well, I coolant could be a little bit different because of the radiator cap. Come on now, we put a lot on that radiator cap, 16 pounds. Freon's different, it's under a lot of pressure, and it doesn't have a cap that just screws on and screws off. It has straight valves, so it is a little different. But I'm gonna show you how to check it real quick simply and save tons of money. So I shut the lights off in the studio because I want to show you really be able to see this light. Um, I have been known in my own garage to put a blanket over the hood so I can find the actual leak because that's how excited I get about this stuff. It, it, it's really cool to kind of like solve mysteries. So I'm going to start at the firewall like I told you before but now I have my UV light and my yellow lenses on my eyes and I can see I've got a little bit, a little seepage right there. The trained eye will tell you that that probably going to be O-rings. So if I'm going to do repair to the system, I'm definitely going to put the O-rings here on the hoses going into that evaporator. Then I'm going to follow them around. I want to make sure that there's no kink in the aluminum lines, no cutting. And then I'm going to pay attention to wherever the Schrader valve is. Because sometimes right here where the factory builds that weld, I've seen those crack. Now it's going to be pretty common, if you've ever had your AC system worked on before, that you're going to see a lot of the, the green or the dye around the valve. Because, well, the end of the lines on those machines have dye going through them all day with the Freon, and it's going to leave this residue behind. You can clean this, and if it comes back, especially inside, use like a cleaner um, solvent, and then 
keep blow it dry or use a rag and really pick it up, make sure it's dry. And if the green comes back inside there, you're going to need a Schrader valve. Follow it down to this connector. Now, I got no green around there, so that tells me that O-ring is good. So I'm going to follow my low side line down. And this is a pressure fitting line that's factory made. And look what I find right there. Can you see that? That line right there, look at the green. So under pressure, Freon is seeping out where the rubber meets the steel. Pretty common. And uh, so this whole line needs to be replaced. You can't replace just this. Now that I'm going to do that, I'm going to put that new O-ring on too. So I got a new O-ring there. And I'm going to follow the line right down to the compressor. And look at that, bingo. More seepage and another pressure fitting on that line. So this line is definitely no good. That's going to cause no AC working because all the Freon has just seeped right out. I'm going to go right to the compressor with my light, see if I can get it down there. Nothing, but those O-rings are going to be changed on that line because the line's coming off. Where that cert belt is, that's the clutch system, and there's a seal behind there. It's about the size of a quarter, and when that blows, you'll see a starburst of green oil coming right out of that clutch area. Boy, is that, that's kind of cool. <laughs> cool to see when you see it because then you know, ah, that compressor is really wasted. So we got a good compressor here. I'm not worried about that. Low side line, definitely going to be replaced. Now I'm going to follow the high side line up. And those are in good shape. The compressor fittings aren't leaking. And that goes right into what we call the condenser. Wow, look at that. That's pretty green there. Could be an O-ring. You could be like, ah, just put O-rings in, Sue. Don't be putting parts in that you don't need. Eh, you know what? And I would agree with you if this car was in a 15 and it's 22. That's seven years old. Guess what this condenser has on the other end of it? It has a receiver dryer. It's part of the whole thing. It's attached to it. That should be changed with AC, minimal of like every five years, unless there's been damage to the car, like an accident. So this condenser, and if you can take your light, you can always see there's always rotted fins. Like they get big bugs or rocks hit it. And these little fins right here, pretty delicate. And I've showed that in the past on other videos I've done. And they just get cracked. All the Freon comes out. And if it has dye in it, you'll see a big green spot in the middle of it. Yeah, that's time to change it. But I'm going to change this because Look how rotted that is down there. It's pouring out of this connector. And there's some on the fins, but is that overflow spraying? It doesn't matter. The receiver dryer is over five years old. So I'm going to do a condenser, low side line, and several O-rings. So now that we diagnose this one or solve the problem, I have someone else in the office that's like, oh, please, my car. So I haven't looked at it yet. I don't know what the AC condition is or what the problem is. So we're going to look at it together and solve it as we go step by step like I did with this one. Let's turn the lights off. So because this car has a V6, it's kind of tight in here to see, but the other one was a four cylinder, so you could see with the evaporator where the lines went right into the evaporator, it was pretty obvious. This one's a little tight fitting, but I can see it from here. It goes in right here, right about almost in front of the driver's side. Ah, very normal stuff I see back here. A little seepage from the O-rings possibly, but nothing to disturb if you don't have to. And I'm just going to follow the high and low side line over here. And here's our first Schrader valve on the high side. Wow, surprisingly, it's relatively clean. There's no oil or dye coming out. I see some residual over here, but that's probably from someone that did a service and it sprayed when they did it. A little condensation around this fitting. Ah, that fitting is a little brighter than I'd like to see. See that? I don't know if you can see it really good, but wow. Yep, so that O-ring's definitely a no good. We have another Schrader valve. Let's take the low side cap off, see what that Schrader valve looks like. Now there's dye in there. There's quite a bit, actually. Got a little pool down at the bottom of it. Look at the pressure fitting on this one. This car's older, and this is still a factory line. And look it, there's no seepage coming out of that. Just condensation, uh, typical the way aluminum pits. And we'll go down to that pressure fitting. Eh, just oil from the engine. Quite a bit of that. I really want to see if I can get to those, that compressor, see if that seal's leaking. That would be something that would be pretty cool to see. I think I'm going to lift it up from the bottom so I can really get to that. So we raised the car up and here's the AC compressor. Yeah, that looks like something, right? Doesn't it? I'm going to tell you what it is real quick. If I shine a regular light on it, it's engine oil. That's what that is. See the color difference? 
It's not neon bright. It's like a dull. That's because it's engine oil. So if it had a Freon leak in it with the dye from PAG oil, it would be neon green. And uh, we don't have any of that. We just have a massive oil leak. And everything's coated. And I don't see any spraying out of the seal, which is what I was kind of hoping for because I think it's really cool to show people when it comes on. But this particular car does not have it. And from here, you can kind of see the condenser where I see the leak. It's on the side seam here. You can see that going all the way up. Look how bad the fins are. Like, this condenser is definitely a contributor to three quarters of the problem. So basically, what it comes down to, what we found, there were a lot of O-ring problems, but both of them had some major condenser. And that's because it's up front. It receives the worst attention. A lot of sand, rocks, heat, everything kind of soft, made of aluminum, takes on the abuse. More than likely, always, you're going to find problems with this. But on these nice import cars, you have the receiver drivers attached. So it's a must replace. You must replace these. So O-rings, condensers, all things you can find at 1AAuto.com for your car or truck. You can do it yourself. Have fun. Show your friends and neighbors how smart you are. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell because then it turns on all your notifications and you won't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching. See that green coming out of there? Yeah, if you saw this video. Like that. See the green? Now you see it. See that? That's a pressure fitting, so that's leaking. The hose is no good. There's a lot going on with this car.